for 20 seconds. Minus 159. Minus 155. The booster and Centaur are now on their own Launch internal start. battery power. Minus 150. Launch sequencer has now started. Securing Centaur LH2. Securing Centaur LO2. Liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen on the Centaur vehicle are being secured. Minus 140. FCS launch enabled. Minus 137. Flight control system has been launch enabled. FTS armed. Vehicle internal. Minus 120. Orcus armed. FCS count started. Minus 110. Vent valves locked. Vehicle's vent valves have now been locked. T minus 52 seconds. Minus 40. Stable at step three. Minus 29. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Minus 20. 15. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Atlas engine ignition. 1. Zero and liftoff of the Atlas V rocket carrying the Astra 1KR satellite for International Launch Services, SES Astra, and Lockheed Martin Commercial Space Systems. Now let's listen to Marty Malinowski as he provides the launch vehicle ascent data from the ASOC Engineering Operations Center here at Cape Canaveral. SB chamber pressures have peaked out, begun to roll over right on schedule. Passing through maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle attitude rates look good. Controlling near zero. Next event is SRB burnout. Chamber pressure indicates we have SRB Plus burnout. 30. Vehicle is currently flying at an altitude of 13.5 miles. Downrange dis distance is 11.2 miles. Speed is 2,557 miles per hour. Range track shows the vehicle is making good progress downrange right down the middle of the corridor. Engine performance continues to look good. Pump speeds are good. Ejector pressure is within securing. parameter. And we've throttled back right on schedule. Vehicle is currently accelerating smoothly at 2.9 Gs. Coming up on SRB Jetson in five seconds. Cape Winds, Adjust Denver. And we have SRB Jetson. 
This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus two steering. minutes, 32 seconds into the flight, and the vehicle Please is closed loop steering has been as expected. The that single bad entry solid rocket booster has performed its mission and been jettisoned. Ready. Very good at this point Atlas point. propulsion. Ready. Atlas hydraulics. Ready. All boost Atlas pneumatics. At Ready. RCS. Centaur engine chill. Ready. Ready. Centaur pneumatics. Ready. Centaur LO2. Ready. Centaur LH2. Ready. Has gas systems. Ready. Facility electrical. Ready. Environmental control system. Current altitude Ready. is OSM. 42 miles. Current downrange distance is 97.8 miles. Velocity is 6,900 miles per hour. LSL. Ready. Range track continues to look very good. Vehicles making good headway downrange. Plus 320. Current acceleration is 4.4 Gs coming up on our 5G throttle segment. And the booster has begun to throttle, maintain 5Gs. Boost space chill down is underway. The pogo bleed valve has been fired. Our all 10 pump temperatures are responding as expected to boost space cooldown. And we've begun to throttle to 4.6Gs in preparation for BECO. Boost phase cooldown is complete. Plus four. And we have the engine shut down. BECO looks good. We have retros and stage separation. Separation looks good. We have locks and fuel pre-start. The RCS GN2 purge firing is underway. Purge firing is complete. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus four and minutes, 26 seconds and counting, and the vehicle is performing as expected. We've had a successful Atlas flight with the Atlas uh, stage having been jettisoned after uh, shutting down as expected at its uh, appropriate time for that mark event. The Pratt & Whitney Rocketdyne built um, RL-10 engine of the Centaur upper stage has ignited on its first burn, and we've now uh, entered our uh, first burn. Again, the mission's continuing as planned. The uh, vehicle right now is at an altitude of 101 nautical miles and uh, continues downrange. Distance downrange is 386 nautical miles, traveling at a velocity of 12,189 miles an hour. And this is Atlas Mission Control at L plus five minutes, 15 seconds and counting. All right, welcome back to our Space Coast Studios. I'm Marla Weech, with you from the Atlas Space Flight Operations Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. We'd like to tell you a little about the three people to whom this mission is dedicated. The Lockheed Martin Atlas team wanted to honor them for their contributions to the program. All three passed away recently, and their families are here at today's launch. The three are Jimmy Morrell, David Getzinger, and Ed Colbreth. Jimmy Morrell was active in the Cape Canaveral community and space industry after retiring from the Air Force more than 12 years ago. He was commander of the 45th Space Wing at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and retired with the rank of Major General. Jimmy headed up the Atlas Independent Review Team for six years and provided valuable counsel to many members of the Atlas team. He will be remembered as an extraordinary person, mentor, advisor, and friend. David Getzinger was an employee of Lockheed Martin for 37 years. His career included service with the Skylab program, shuttle ground support, the FAA, and Titan IV. He worked on the first Atlas III and also worked with Atlas V development in configuration management. Ed Colbreth, a launch operations employee for 17 years, was a specialist in the field of logistics. He made sure that the thousands of spare inventory items were always available to support operations. He truly exemplified the attention to detail that is the hallmark of a successful launch system. We remember all three today for their valuable and lasting contributions. And we are now a little over six minutes into flight, so let's check with Don Spencer for a quick update on the mission now. Don. 
This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 7 minutes, uh, 12 seconds into the flight, and the flight is continuing as expected. We're in the Centaur first burn. Uh, this is a 13 minute, 38 second long burn. Uh, at the conclusion of this, we'll enter the lengthy 85 minute coast phase. And again, everything is continuing as planned, and the vehicle continues downrange, about 800 nautical miles downrange from Cape Canaveral. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 7 minutes, 35 seconds, and counting. Thanks, Don. And now we'd like to introduce you to one of the key customer executives for this launch, Alexander Odendike. Odendike, rather. SES Astra Senior Vice President and Chief Commercial Officer. We caught up with him yesterday afternoon while he was at Cape Canaveral, and here's what he had to say. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexander Odendike. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer for SES Astra. We're here in sunny and warm Florida to launch Astra 1KR. Uh, this will already be the 15th satellite launch for SES Astra, but it's the first launch on an Atlas Centaur rocket. Uh, this satellite will be positioned at 19.2 east, which is the prime orbital position for SES. We deliver to 107 million households in Europe radio and TV signals. And this satellite is also a showpiece of the commitment that the company has in procuring replacement capacity which demonstrates our technical expertise and our technical competence and also our leadership in this field. We uh, have had a very good cooperation with Lockheed Martin over the last few years uh, with the ILS, so I would like to thank the launch team and also the technical teams that worked on preparing the satellite for launch. Uh, we also like to thank our investors who made it happening, our uh, employees and, and colleagues who are working all over the, the globe and finally, last but not least, our customers who made it happening. So we're looking for a very successful launch and a very successful deployment, which will start in the middle of June. So from sunny Florida again, thank you, good day and good night, wherever you are. Very good. As the mission team is now focused on the progress of the Atlas V rocket, team members are also tuned into its important payload, the Astra 1KR satellite. And let's take a look at this short video to learn more about the satellite operator, SES Astra, who will use Astra 1KR to provide its customers in Europe with continued direct-to-home satellite services. You are the future. You entertain, connect, inform, and interact. So who will you trust to reach the largest audiences? and deliver the greatest reliability. Astra, the satellite system. Today's satellite was built to replace two of seven satellites, both located at 19.2 degrees east longitude. The 1KR will replace Astra 1B and 1C, launched in 1991 and 1993, respectively. Let's take a moment to learn more about the company that built the satellite in this video from Lockheed Martin Commercial Space Systems. Lockheed Martin Commercial Space Systems is proud to partner with our customer SES Astra to deliver the Astra 1KR telecommunications satellite. Based on the award-winning A2100 spacecraft, Astra 1KR will operate from 19.2 degrees east and is designed for a minimum service life of 15 years. Astra 1KR is a high-powered KU band satellite that features 32 transponders that will provide distribution of direct-to-home broadcast services across Europe. Astra 1KR is the 29th of Lockheed Martin's award-winning A2100 series of spacecraft delivered to satellite operators around the world. One of the planned seven launches this year, Astra 1KR is also the first of two satellites Lockheed Martin will deliver to SES Astra. 
Lockheed Martin Commercial Space Systems manufactures a wide range of satellite payloads from commercial fixed and broadcast services to secure military communications for government customers on the industry's most flexible and modular platform, the award-winning A2100. Lockheed Martin provides the best overall value for our customers' investments in satellite communication systems and support services. Throughout our nearly half-century track record of excellence in space, our customers have come to recognize us for superior technical capabilities, design and engineering, manufacturing, operations, support, and problem solving. The A2100 is first in in-orbit performance as measured by the insurance industry and holds the best in-orbit track record as reflected in the lowest level of spacecraft anomalies. When you think of satellites, think Lockheed Martin first. There's always a lot of excitement before any rocket launch. A few days ago, while the satellite was being encapsulated, we had a chance to interview the leaders of the launch teams. First up is ILS Mission Director Bill McMurray. Let's hear what he had to say. SCS Astra is a long-term ILS customer, but this is their first Atlas mission, and we're thrilled to have them here at Cape Canaveral. I think they're finding out what a fantastic vehicle the Atlas launch vehicle is and what a great team of engineering and operations people we have on site. I want to thank John and his spacecraft people for the uh, professional job they've done so far in getting us as far as we are, and to Ralph and, and his Astra team for their professional support and mostly for their business. Please come see us again. And welcome back to the studios once again. I'm joined by ILS Program Director Jim Bonner, who has been monitoring the mission. So Jim, how do you think everything's going so far? Very well, we've had a successful SRB separation, booster engine cutoff and separation, a successful start of the Centaur main engine for the first of its two burns, as well as a successful separation of the fairing. Uh, right now, it's about 14 and a half minutes into the flight, and everything is going as expected. Excellent, well, prior to this launch now, Atlas V had seven successful missions, a perfect record since its first flight in 2002. So what does that say about the reliability of this launch system? Well, the Atlas has unparalleled reliability and, and uh, track record uh, to, to back that up. The Atlas V vehicle was designed first off with fewer components than the pre previous versions of the Atlas. In addition to that, we were still able to design in redundancies within the launch vehicle hardware itself to control the mission critical events. Now after every Atlas flight, there's a very intensive post-flight data review process whereby all of the data is reviewed and we essentially look at our lessons learned to see what may not have gone as uh, perfect as we would have liked, what things may need improvement to help ensure that the next flight is also successful. To date, all the uh, configurations of Atlas have flown successfully on their first flights. Great, thank you, Jim. We'll keep checking with you. And though ILS has launched seven previous missions for SES Astra, today's mission marks the first time SES Astra has launched on an Atlas. Therefore, we wanted to hear what the customer's launch team thought of working at Cape Canaveral. Ralph Hutzel is the launch manager from SES Astra, and here's what he had to say. The launch of the Astra 1KR spacecraft is highly important for SES Astra. We have been launching satellites with ILS for exactly 10 years now. This is the first time that we are using an Atlas vehicle to be launched from Cape Canaveral. And we are excited to be here in Florida to work the final steps of this demanding campaign. Once Astra 1KR has separated, it will use its onboard propulsion system to propel itself up to geostationary orbit where it will be deployed. It will undergo thorough in-orbit testing and all those operations will be performed by Lockheed Martin Astra teams at the A2100 Spacecraft Operations Center in Newton, Pennsylvania. Finally, 
Astra 1KR will be drifted to its operational uh, position at 19.2 degrees east, uh, where it will be permanently controlled from the satellite and payload operations facility at the Astra headquarters in uh, Betzdorf, Luxembourg. Preparing for a spacecraft launch is always a very intense period of hard work, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank everybody involved in this program, in particular Lockheed Martin, Meredith, Mike, John and their respective teams, Astrotech, Bruce and his team, as well as ILS, Bill and his team, for their demonstrated passion and dedication. All right, thank you, Ralph. And let's bring in launch commentator Don Spencer once again for another key milestone in today's mission. Don. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 17 minutes, and uh, or just turned 18 minutes. And just uh, moments ago, we had the Centaur main engine cutoff number one. So the uh, Centaur first stage has, uh, or upper stage rather, has completed its first burn. We're now entering a coast phase, uh, 86 minutes long. The coast phase is a lengthy coast and it will be followed by the main engine start number two at a mission elapsed time of uh, uh, one hour 48 minutes and then uh, we'll have spacecraft separation shortly after. The, so the vehicle is continuing to perform as planned. The vehicle is uh, continuing to head down range right now at an altitude of 104 nautical miles and um, everything has gone as planned with the mission so far, each of the MARC events occurring as expected. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 18 minutes, 51 seconds, and counting. All right. Thank you, Don. And time now to meet with another VIP from the satellite side of the launch team. It's John McKenna, Chief Engineer for Lockheed Martin Commercial Space Systems. John recently spoke with our crew about working with ILS and SES Astra, and he also addressed the uniqueness of today's mission from the manufacturer's standpoint. Here's what he had to say. My name is John McKenna. I'm the Chief Engineer on the Astra 1KR program for Lockheed Martin Commercial Space Systems in Newtown, Pennsylvania. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Bill and his group for the fine Atlas rocket we're about to ride on. I'd also like to thank the SES Astra team, Nelton and Ralph, for their professionalism. I believe that SES Astra is receiving a fine, superb spacecraft, and I believe they will be happy with it. I'd like to say, go Atlas, go Astro 1KR. All right, thanks, John. And as you just heard from launch commentator Don Spencer a moment ago, flight controllers have confirmed the completion of the first of two planned burns of the Centaur upper stage. The Centaur and its satellite payload are now in a coast phase, which will last for about an hour and 26 minutes. At this time, we're going to take a break in the broadcast. We'll be back with you in a little over an hour with live coverage of the end of the Astra 1KR mission, which is spacecraft separation. We'll leave you now with another look at today's stunning liftoff. Please join us back here in about an hour and 20 minutes. I'm Marlo Each, along with Jim Bonner, Don Spencer, and the ILS and Atlas teams. We thank you for joining us. Off of the Atlas V rocket carrying the Astra 1KR satellite for International Launch Services, SES Astra, and Lockheed Martin Commercial Space Systems. Now let's listen to Marty Malinowski as he provides the launch vehicle ascent data from the ASOC Engineering Operations Center here at Cape Canaveral. SB chamber pressures have peaked out, begun to roll over right on schedule. 